Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, um, so today I'll be giving an overview talk on um, aging and decision-making competence, building a lot on the previous talk. Um, so what I'll do is... Vice versa. <laughs> Um, so what I'll do is a, uh, I'll start by introducing uh, a measure of individual differences in decision-making competence. Then I'll discuss four key findings from the psychology of aging that have been relevant uh, to better understand how people make decisions, um, also building on this individual differences measure of decision-making competence. Then I'll give some suggestions for developing communications uh, for uh, supporting the decisions of older adults. And I'll end with simple take-home messages if I have time. Um, so my colleagues, Andy Parker, uh, Ruth Bischoff, and I um, have uh, developed an individual differences measure of adult decision-making competence. And when developing this measure, we basically looked at the literature on behavioral decision-making and tried to identify those decision tasks that have been developed in the literature uh, to cover the broad span of decision processes that are deemed relevant to normative theories of decision making for, for someone to make good decisions. And uh, we were among the first to show that those hypothetical decision tasks that are typically used in lab-based studies um, have internal consistency, uh, so there's a correlation to performance across tasks, suggesting stable individual differences in decision making competence. Um, and performance also has validity in terms of correlations with real world decision outcomes, suggesting that they are capturing, uh, those tasks are capturing something that's relevant to real world decision making. Um, so these findings of reliability and validity uh, support the use of an individual differences measure that consists of the hypothetical, hypothetical decision tasks that have been developed in the behavioral decision research literature. And so we refer to it as the adult decision making competence measure. And having a validated scale of decision-making competence spurred research on individual differences and aging um, that had been mostly overlooked in the field of behavioral decision-making until then. Uh, behavioral decision researchers had mostly been interested in situational pressures of decision-making and on identifying when and why people violate uh, normative recommendations for decision-making basically to show economists that they were making the wrong assumptions about how people make decisions. But so there hadn't been a lot of research yet on individual differences. Um, so we started using our individual differences measure to look at individual differences in decision making and to and build on the psychology of aging. So the first um, um, thing that we looked at was fluid cognitive ability because decision-making had traditionally been seen as a cognitive um, um, enterprise. Um, so in our first study, we um, took the tasks that are part of the decision-making competence measure, um, and I don't have time to go into the details of what the ta tasks entail, but the most important point of this slide is that we found a mixed pattern of results. So performance declines with age on the first two tasks on this slide, um, it stays the same with age on the next two tasks, and then it improves with age on the final two tasks. And then they also had a measure of fluid cognitive ability, and as you can see, the tasks on which uh, performance declines with age are also the tasks um, where performance is more strongly correlated with fluid cognitive ability. Um, so um, after running more complex um, models, um, we concluded that older adults do worse than younger adults on cognitively demanding decision tasks, uh, perhaps as a result uh, of cognitive aging. Um, but that does lead to the question, um, what is going on in these other decision tasks um, if fluid cognitive ability isn't driving uh, older adults' performance on those tasks, then what other abilities or changes with age might be relevant to making decisions? And may maybe making decisions is not just a cognitive enterprise. Um, so you've already seen the slide before today, uh, but here you see um, uh, the, the, the typical findings of cognitive aging. So as we get older, processing speed, reasoning, and memory go down. Um, but vocabulary knowledge goes up. Uh, we learned that also from the previous presentation, and that's important 
um, to decision making in this sense. We think that vocabulary knowledge improves with age because older adults are more experienced with using a language, they're more exposed to different words, and so presumably as we get older we also have more experience in decision making. Um, and we learned from the previous talk that experienced decision makers may not have to think as hard about their decisions because they already know what to do. So that's good news for the aging decision maker. But there are, of course, also other things that improve with age that we've learned from, uh, that you've learned in the psychology of aging that we try to apply to um, understanding age differences in decision making. So I don't know if you've seen this, but um, on this slide I'm showing a photograph that I took uh, of a page from the new book on grit by Angela Duckworth. And um, on this, the grit, according to Angela Duckworth, is um, basically uh, people's perseverance um, with the projects that they've started. It's, it's a combination of perseverance and passion. And um, um, she explains this graph as follows. So one explanation is that younger adults have a lot of unfocused energy. So they um, start projects but don't really stick with them. And then as people get older, um, they become more aware of what their life goals are. And so they start things that they really care about and they stick with them, so they have more grit. Um, but it's really related to also finding, finding life goals. Um, so it also means a selective focus on goals. So older adults care about putting efforts into things that lead to their, are related to their life goals but not so much on things that are not related to their life goals. Um, so that highlights that um, decision tasks may measure ability and motivation. And um, that is also highlighted by research by uh, Thomas Hess and others in psychology and aging, um, where older adults uh, show lower performance than younger adults on tasks that um, are seemingly irrelevant or abstract. Uh, but they can perform just as well as younger adults on tasks that are relevant to them. Um, so this highlights the role of motivation. And we also find that uh, when we measure motivation, older adults are less motivated to work on uh, tedious numerical decision tasks that we know from the literature um, people uh, don't like. And if, if you run those studies in the lab, people will complain to you about how annoying they find these tasks. And older adults um, perform worse on these tasks partly because they're less motivated uh, to spend time on these tasks. So that really highlights the importance of giving our participants decision tasks that they're motivated to uh, engage with if we're interested in measuring their ability. A uh, fourth thing that change with age um, is um, emotions, emotion regulation. Um, so um, I think we've already heard today that older adults um, um, are um, engaging cognitive reappraisal. So they dwell less on their losses. So for example, the coping literature finds that when a, a, lo a loved one dies, so really extreme loss in, loss in life, older adults tend to savor the positive memories. They tend to think about how lucky they were that they knew this loved one and they had some, some good times with them. And on the other hand, uh, or in contrast with that, young adults, they tend to dwell on their regrets that they didn't spend more time with their loved one, that they didn't treat them better. And um, so there's a, 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 they feel different when, when, when having these negative experiences. Now, older adults, um, lesser focus on losses is also relevant to decision making when decisions involve losses. Um, so sunk cost um, is, um, according to um, economic definition, sunk costs are investments that you've made uh, in an option. And those inv investments are lost, independent of how you proceed in your decision making. So these could be investments of time or money. Um, and if you've invested time and money um, in an option and you can't get that back no matter how you proceed, then you really should be making the decision on the basis of your expectations for future costs and benefits related to that option, according to economic theories of decision making. So um, our research shows that older adults are better able to walk away from uh, commitments that have gone sour, uh, whereas younger adults tend to dwell on the losses and stick with options that are no longer beneficial. Um, older adults are also more focused on maintaining positive emotions, so this fits with Laura Carstensen's socio-emotional selectivity theory that people um, recognize that life is short and they want to make the best of what they've left, 
and um, that focuses them on positive emotions. And of course, um, we're increasingly learning that emotions are also important to decision making, and that emotion goals can affect decision making um, uh, because older adults focus more on positive information. And that may be okay as long as the positive information gives them everything they need to make informed decisions. So what does that mean for developing communications? Well, if you're worried about older adults' cognitive decline, you could provide decision aids. So for example, retirement calculators when making pension decisions. You could also reduce the number of options in the decision. Um, reducing the number of options makes decisions easier to make. It makes it less likely that people avoid the decision. They find it less overwhelming. Uh, it makes it more likely that people identify the correct option if there is one, and it makes people feel uh, happier with the choices after they've made them. This is true for younger and older adults. Uh, to build on the finding that older adults have more experience, it may be important to provide familiar examples in communication so that they're easier uh, to use. Um, to improve mo the older adults' motivation to engage with information, um, it's important to highlight its personal relevance and its relation to uh, older adults' life goals. And to build on older adults' emotions, it may be important to frame emotion positively. Now, some of these recommendations have been tested, but some of them have not. And this is important. Um, I work a lot with experts in different domains who want to communicate to specific audiences to help them to make more informed decisions. So, for, for example, I've worked with public health experts trying to develop patient communications, but also experts in other domains. Ox experts often de uh, design communications without testing for effectiveness, so they have no idea whether the communi communications actually inform decisions. And um, the ones that are tested are often found to be ineffective, perhaps because domain experts don't always know their audiences that well, so they use wording that is too complex. And they focus on information that they find compelling, but it's not necessarily relevant to people's decisions, um, or not what people need or want to know to make more informed decisions. So in behavioral decision research, we've developed an approach with developing effective communications. And I don't have time to go over the entire approach. The important point is the second step, which involves explicit psychological research with members of the intended audience so that you learn uh, their mental models, how they make decisions, the wording that they prefer, so that you can de uh, design communications that bear their um, target uh, uh, and are better understood uh, by your target audience. If you want to know more about this methodology, I can recommend these two textbooks. Uh, the final paper was published in PNAS and discusses recent developments in this methodology. And if you don't like to read, there is a YouTube video in which I explain it to the National Academy of Sciences, um, Sacla Corolokium on the Science of Science Communication. Um, so, simple take-home messages. We know that older adults face cognitive decline as well documented, but they also have more experience, differential motivation, and a focus on positive emotions that can benefit their decision making. So if we design communications targeting older adults to support their decisions, we should have, keep their strengths and weaknesses in mind. But also we should test our messages before disseminating them so that we know that our communications are beneficial to older adults. And it would also help to have those insights so that we can develop the field of psychology and aging as well as the field of behavioral decision making. Thank you.